The Uniformed Services Employment and Reemployment Rights Act is the federal law that provides protection and re for your reemployment rights. The USERRA law, which is what I will be referring to it as, applies to all employers in the United States and overseas to include foreign companies that are doing business here in the U.S. What does that mean? It doesn't matter whether they have one employee in their company or whether they have hundreds or thousands of uh, employees, they have to abide by the USERRA law. The purpose of the law is to encourage military service, assure prompt reemployment, and prohibit discrimination. We're going to cover some of the significant provisions, such as emphasizing prompt reemployment. It specifies service members' responsibility, protection against discharge. It specifies reemployment position and non seniority benefits. Also, the USERRA law talks about immediate reinstatement of health insurance. It defines and explains health and pension plan benefits during service members' periods of military service and up upon return from that service. The USERRA law clarifies reinstatement rights and provides protection against harassment and discrimination. Protection against discrimination. It applies to current members, those who apply to be uh, members of the uniformed service, and those who have um, performed military service. What does that mean? If I'm a service member and I'm not yet in the military, but I'm applying, maybe I have to go for a military exam, I would still be covered if I needed to take off from work to go for a physical exam. The protection includes uh, protection from discrimination against employment, reemployment, termination, promotion, and benefits of employment. The burden of proof is on the employer. What does that mean? Well. If I return to my employer after a period of military service and I've been laid off, the employer would have to provide proof that the, the reason you're laid off wasn't because of your military affiliation. What does that mean? Well, what criteria did the employer use to determine that you were laid off? If you're the only one in your company that's laid off, Again, you need to find out what criteria was used. What if maybe the company did have layoffs company-wide, but you're the only one in your department? Again, find out what criteria was used to determine that you were the person to be laid off. The burden of proof is on the employer. USERRA, in reference to other laws, it's going to supersede state laws, contract, company policy, Every company has to be able to have a military leave policy that matches up to the USERRA law. Now, if your company provides a greater benefit than what the federal law provides, then the USERRA law is not going to diminish or nullify that benefit. An example of that would be maybe your company provides continued pay during your periods of military service. Well, the federal law USERRA is not going to diminish that benefit. It's not a requirement of the federal law that your company do that, but if they do that, that's great. That is something that is above and beyond what's required by federal law. What if your company maybe does pay differential? Again, that's not something that's required by the federal law, but the federal law is not going to diminish that benefit because it is a greater benefit than what is provided by federal law. What employees are covered? Again, a person who applies to be a member, who currently performs, or has performed military service. And it applies to all reserve components. Who's eligible for reemployment? The service member, first of all, has to be absent for the purpose of military service. Who's not eligible? What if I work for a contractor and my contract is going to expire on such and such a date? Well, that is going to be a uh, position that, expect that has an expected termination date, is not expected to reoccur. So that would be something that would not be covered by USERRA. Another example would be if I work for a temporary agency. Again, it's a temp position. There's no expectation that that would be a reoccurring position. So that would not be covered by the USERRA law. What about part-time employees? Are they covered? Yes, 
part-time employees would be covered if they've established a history of employment with that company, even if they're seasonal, they're going to be covered if they've established that history. What is my requirement as a service member? I must hold a position of employment. I must leave for the purpose of military service, provide prior notice to the employer, serve honor under honorable conditions, return to work in a timely manner, and not exceed the five-year limit. What position am I entitled to upon my return to my employer? I often hear service members say, I'm entire, entitled to the position I left, or I'm entitled to a comparable position. Well, the correct answer would be, you're entitled to the escalator position. What is the escalator position? That is the position that you would have obtained had you not gone on military duty. What does that mean? Perhaps you're in a step program that's based on seniority with the company. After 18 months, you automatically go to the next step. Well, if you're on a period of military duty, when you've met that time frame, and you would have automatically gone to the next step, whether or not you were deployed, if you were there at that company, well, when you return, you will still go to that next step. You will step back into the position that you would have obtained had you not been on military duty. Uh, a good example that I like to use is a journeyman. So if, um, if I'm an apprentice and I've met the time frame with the company required to become a journeyman, but I was on military duty during that time, once I return, if I can show them that I can perform at the next level, then I'm entitled to the next level, the journeyman's uh, status. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't have to do what's required to go to the next level. If there are things in addition to time and grade that are required to accomplish that next level, you'll still be required to do those. But once you return from military service and you meet those other requirements, then the effective date would be retroactive to what it would have been had you not been on military duty. Qualification efforts. Your employer must be able to provide you with the training or retraining necessary for you to be at the position that you would have been in had you not been on military duty. Let's talk a little bit more about the escalator position. What does that entail? Well, the escalator position, again, is the position that you would have been in had you not been on military service. What if I come back and there is no promoted position that I would have been in? Well, I would just be put into whatever position is comparable in that case. What else are, is included with the escalator position? Think about it, bonuses. Maybe your company received a company-wide bonus. If all the employees received a bonus, you're entitled to that. Maybe they received the 2% uh, pay increase while you were on military duty. If so, you're entitled to that. How are you going to know what happened during your absence? Again, communication is key. Find out what jobs came open, what bonuses were given out, what pay raises, and you are entitled to prompt reemployment. What does that mean? Well, if I've been gone six months and I come back, I notify my employer of my return, they can't tell me you're going to have to wait a month before we bring you back. That would not be considered prompt reemployment. Normally, it's considered two weeks. What is the reemployment time schedule? If my period of service is one to 30 days, I have to report back to my employer on the next regularly scheduled work day after eight hours of rest plus travel time. What does that mean? If I get off of drill duty on a Sunday at five o'clock, my employer can't make me go to work at 10 o'clock that night. Again, eight hours of rest plus travel time. If my period of service is 31 to 180 days, I'm given 14 days before I have to report to my employer. If the period of service is greater than 180 days, I'm given 90 days before I have to uh, report. That allows me to basically reintegrate into my community, spend time with my family, maybe I need some uh, rehabilitation or counseling. Uh, it gives me time to do those things. 
if I've been injured and I'm under a doctor's care and my doctor says I'm unable to work, then that reemployment time can be extended up to two years, in some cases longer. Also, after a period of military service, I may receive protection against the uh, termination. If the period of service was one to 30 days, then that's not gonna apply. But if it's 31 to 180 days, I'm given 180 days of protection from discharge. If my period of service was greater than 180 days, I'm given a year's protection from discharge. What does that mean? Can I go in my office and curse my supervisor out and still be protected? No. Uh, you can still be discharged for cause. So if there is a reason that you give your employer to terminate you, then you can still be terminated. What are the defenses against you, Sarah? Reduction in force. We talked about the escalator position. Just as the escalator goes up, it also goes down. If when I return, if I'm laid off, and I would have been laid off regardless of my military service, then I'm gonna step back into laid off status. The law is not gonna give you super reemployment rights. Again, it's only to put you in the position that you would have been in had you not been on military duty. What if the business closed? Of course, you can't work where there's no longer a business. So again, you're not gonna get super reemployment rights. So if those things happen, then definitely you will be affected. Undue hardships. Maybe you've suffered an injury and your employer uh, will not be able to make accommodations because it would cause a hardship financially for that employer, especially if it's a mom and pop company. If due to your disability, uh, due to your injuries, you're no longer able to perform the job that you would have performed and the employer cannot financially make those accommodations, then uh, again, it would not be something that he, would, or he or she would be required to do. But there are a lo other laws that would help you in that situation. How to resolve an employer issue. First off, inform your chain of command. That's your unit employer relations rep in your unit. Let them know if you have an issue. They should be able to give you some guidance as to what section of the law covers that situation. And you can take that information back to your employer. If that does not resolve the issue, contact the ESGR headquarters to open a case that number is 1-800-336-4590. If at any point you arrange for a private counsel, then ESGR will not be able to provide assistance in this uh, issue. Neither will the Department of Labor. How are these issues resolved? Most of the time, ESGR is able to resolve the conflict. 88% of the time we're able to resolve the issue by a simple phone call to your HR director to let them know there's pot potentially a violation and point them to the area in which uh, the law has been violated. In those scenarios in which we are not able to resolve the issue, we will refer the service member to the P Department of Labor Veterans Education and Training Services. They have more authority than we do. They can subpoena documents and witnesses. If they deem that the case has merit, they'll refer it to the Department of Justice. Again, you as the service member have to maintain your role and your responsibilities in reference to your employer. Communication is key. Recognizing that employer and of course contacting your unit first whenever there's an issue that needs to be resolved. ESGR has also partnered with the Employer Partnership of the Armed Forces to offer assistance to service members who are unemployed or underemployed. There is a website that service members can go on to look for um, employment opportunities with companies who are military, military friendly. The website is www.employerpartnership.org. Employers are looking for you. You are already trained in a variety of skills that employers need. You have a strong work ethic and are reliable. You have leadership experience. You're committed to self-improvement. Your skills and experiences allow you to hit the ground running and make an immediate positive impact to any organization. 
How does the employer partnership help you? The program forms partnerships with civilian employers that are military friendly, realize the value of military training, and desire to support our troops. The program has resources that help employers and job seekers. The program provides employer partners with access to our skills and disciplined workforce. The program provides service members access to career opportunities across our nation.